this thing. Uh, what, what a great day it is to be here with you guys in this church this morning on such a pleasant, pleasant morning, correct? Yes. I mean, we know, that, we know that God is here with us each and every moment. And if you just look outside at the blue skies and a little chill in the air, we know that He is in control. He is in control. I have some announcements to make this morning. Uh, if I miss something or I don't get the times right, please let me know. Uh, but uh, we have a Bible study back here at 8.45 in the morning, uh, Sunday mornings. Uh, Tika was out this morning. She was not feeling well, so would ask for prayers for her. Uh, it's a good class. I attended it this morning. I learned, I mean, it opened my eyes to some different perspectives about things. So, uh, so you're welcome to join there every Sunday morning. The UMM, we met... Uh, Yesterday morning, had a great breakfast with a lot of, a lot of young fellas, a lot of old goats, I guess you could say, but we're all there. Uh, you're more than welcome to please come over, enjoy a good breakfast and some fellowship with us. Uh, UMM also, they meet, right? Thursday. And What's that? Thursday. Thursday. Okay, Thursday. And then uh, Wednesday night, we have a Wednesday night supper. Is that at 5? Is that what time that is? 6. six. At 6 o'clock, I think it's burgers and... 
burgers and hot dogs. So come on, more more than welcome. I think you got tickets to sell. You still selling them? Yeah. All right, we got them. We got them. Uh, anything else? Did I miss anything? Well, I'm not Larry Smith, and I'm not going to attempt to be Larry Smith. I mean Larry Carter. I'm sorry. So, uh, well, we know Larry Smith too, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, he's not Larry Smith either. But you know my saying. When the horn toots, all God's people should be ready to scoot. <laughs> all right. So let's bow our heads in prayer this morning. Dear Lord, dear Lord, we thank you that we can gather here, Lord, as, as a group, as a congregation, to honor you, Lord, to be with you. And Lord, no matter what tragedies or what sacrifices, or what troubles this earth may give us, Lord. We know that you are truly the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, you rule over the lands and you keep us safe. Yesterday, Lord, was a, was a hard day for a lot of folks. We had it 20 years ago, Lord, you know. It was a troubling time, Lord. And Lord, we say prayers for all those, Lord, who not only ran out of, but ran into the buildings, Lord, to save lives. Yesterday, Lord, 20 years ago, I think the number is 2,977 lives and souls were lost. But Lord, it did more to bring us together than we've ever felt in, our, in my lifetime. And Lord, that was you. God, that was you. You brought us together. You held us close. And you just showed us that no matter what we face in life, if we have faith and hope, you are there. You're, you're the great comforter. comforter. You take care of us, Lord. You watch over us no matter what. And Lord, I just pray that you will be with each of us here, with our families. And for those who are not here, Lord, just Reach out and hold us close like a true father would. Lord, I ask that you be with us, protect us, guide us. Be with Pastor Carson, the choir, and every member of this con congregation. And Lord, I ask all these things in your loving, divine, holy name. Amen. Now, if you would, would you turn to page 881 in your hymn, please? No. No, no, not, yet. not yet. Not yet? I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> All right. Let's stand and sing our opening hymn, number 152. I sing the Almighty Power of God.
Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so if you would, just please remain standing and pay, turn to page 881 in your hymnal. And let's recite the historic affirmation of faith saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And we're still using our hymnal. We're going to do another Psalter, which comes from the Psalms. And so I'd ask you to please open your hymnal and respond in this reading with us. It's page 750 in your hymnal. And we're looking at Psalm number 19. And they call this a Psalter. It's, it's music, it's responsive reading, and as part of that, there's a sung response that we all get to learn. Choir's gonna help teach us, and we're gonna help, help to do this together. You guys feeling a Psalter? Everyone ready? All right, we can do it, church. All right. Brenda, would you mind helping us out? Let's try to sing that together. The law of God is just reviving the soul. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech. There are no words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and runs its course with joy, like a strong man. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hid from its heat. The law of God is just reviving the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. The law of God is just reviving the soul. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can understand one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Also keep your servant from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock, my Redeemer. 
I'd invite our ushers to please come forward as we prepare our hearts, our minds for a time of offering to the Lord. Will you go to God in prayer with me? God, we thank you that you give us out of your abundance. Your abundant grace fills us and leaves us with nothing but awe for who you are. Will you help us as we give to you in honor of your holy and your precious name? Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you. So only God, only God can move a mountain. Only God, God Almighty, all these beautiful names that we give God, only God full of majesty. It's this God that we go to prayer. It's this God that we, we humbly bow ourselves before, knowing that at the end of really all of our days, what, who God really is is all that matters. He's the author, the preserver of our salvation, the perfecter of our life and faith. This has been a, a difficult weekend, as you know, 9-11, 20 years. And so I'm, I'm going to ask for those 2,977 people that were lost on that particular day 20 years ago. And we would have a moment of silence, and then I'm going to read a prayer um, just about God's time, God's order, and God's future. It's a prayer that was written by Howard Thurman, um, a pastor and theologian. But will you go to God with me first, and let's bow our heads and stay quiet as we just remember who God really is. Holy God, I need your sense of time. Always, I have an underlying anxiety about things. Sometimes I am in a hurry to achieve my ends and am completely without patience. It's hard for me to realize that growth is slow, that not all processes are swift. I cannot discriminate, but between what takes time to develop and what can be rushed because of my sense of time is dulled. Oh, to understand the meaning of perspective, that I may do all things with a profound sense of leisure, of time. Oh God, I, I need your sense of order. The confusion of the details of living is sometimes overwhelming. The little things keep getting in my way, providing ready-made excuses for failure to do and be what I know I ought to do and be. Much time is spent on things that are not very important, while significant things are put in an insignificant place in my scheme of order. I must unscramble my affairs so that my life will become order. Oh God, I need your sense of order. God, I, I need your sense of the future. Teach me to know that life is ever on the side of the future. Keep me in your future, that high hope. Let me not be frozen either by the past or the present, but grant me, O oh patient one, your sense of the future, without which all life would sicken and die. God, we ask as your church, as Cox Chapel, so many different things that are going on in this world, we ask that you would become present, that your living presence would meet us right here and right now. That, that your time, your order, and your future would meet us where we are. That we would get our priorities in line. That we'd put our lives in the priority of what you see as important. 
Help us to love one another as you love us. In your holy and your precious name, all children said, Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Our scripture lesson today comes from Proverbs. We're, we're continuing to read a little bit about wisdom and not just human wisdom, but godly wisdom. And this scripture is an interesting scripture and there are many places in the Bible that, that are ready to tell us about God's wisdom that's ever ready for us to hear. This is in your bulletin, if you can see that. It's a little, little small print, perhaps. But that's, that's for you, and, and uh, I hope that you can see that and be ready to read along as, as we share our scripture for the day. Would you please stand as you are able for our scripture today? Hear the word of the Lord, Proverbs 1. Verse 20 through 33. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed of my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but I will, they will not find me because they hated knowledge. They did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel, and despised all of my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices, for waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Woo! Some scripture, it just, it, it hits you like a ton of bricks, doesn't it? Just hits you in your gut, where it feels like, oh, simple one. You talking to me? You know. Fool, you talking to me? Sometimes, I've been simple, I've been foolish, I've gone wayward, I, I've, not, I've not placed my life in God's order, God's time, God's future, I've, I've thought about my time, I've thought about my order, my priorities, I've thought about my future, but, but God seems to tell us in scripture that, that there's a, a wisdom with a capital W. And her, ladies, come on, that, right? Her name is wisdom. Scripture tells us that she's calling in the streets. It's kind of an interesting description of this wisdom out there, right? Uh, but I, I hope you can hear it. I hope that you can hear something from, from what we're reading, that, that, that God has a foundational wisdom that is ever-present, even in the foundations of the earth. And I, I want to explain a little bit about that, but I want us to go to Scripture for that. Now, in your pew, you should have a Bible, or maybe you brought your own. 
And maybe you came to the Bible study this morning, which, by the way, was, it was awesome. I'm so looking forward to this time. Come at 8.40 if you want to eat a little bit. We had a little bit of coffee. It's like kind of nice. At 9 a.m. on the screen right here, we see a video clip. We're going back in time to the days of Bethlehem uh, 2,000 years ago to try to understand Jesus from, from a Jewish perspective from the Old Testament reading perspective of the New Testament. And it's been amazing to try to just look at the symbolism and understanding of what scripture tells us. That aside, in your Bible, please turn to Proverbs number eight. So we've just been in Proverbs number one, Turn a few more pages over and let's go to Proverbs number eight. And maybe you can find someone in your pew to be our, our designated Bible turner. Someone that, I, I made a joke last week. You remember the old sword drills, they used to call them, uh, of try and find this scripture in Sunday school and, and teaching us how to turn the pages to find the Bible. It's good to feel the Bible. Church, it's, it's good to feel the pages of God's Word. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm all about the smartphone and looking up things, on the, and the Bible has an app, and amen, I, I love it. But there, there really is something about turning the pages of God's word and letting it, letting it pour into you. Let's, let's turn to Proverbs 8, and just hear this right at the very beginning. This is kind of reminiscent of what we just heard in Proverbs 1. It says, does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. And beside the gates leading into the city, at the entrances, she cries aloud. And hear what she cries aloud. To you, O oh people, I call out and I raise my voice to all humankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, gain understanding. Listen, for I have worthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. For my lips detest wickedness. And all the words of my mouth are just. And none of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are faultless to those who have knowledge. Choose my instruction. Remember, who is this? This is wisdom. This is wisdom of the Lord. Choose the wisdom of the Lord's instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies. And nothing you desire can compare with her. Now, now hear this next. This is interesting. I, wisdom, Dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord, which means to give awe to the Lord, to give respect to the Lord, is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance. Evil speech and perverse speech, says wisdom. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have understanding and power. By me kings reign, and rulers make laws that are just. Verse 16. By me princes govern, and all nobles who rule on earth. Now, let me pause right there. Do you hear the, the word of the Lord? It's, it's, it's trying to show us a baked in foundational wisdom which says, if you really want to know something that is just, 
that, that something that won't, it doesn't just get our way for today, but has long-lasting justice in the form of law, in the, in the form of, of how we will live our lives. Follow the way of the Lord. Follow the way of the Lord. It would be so easy to be quick as a king, as a prince, as a ruler, to make a decree and to make a law and to make people do what you say. But the way of the Lord is just. Seeking not its own wisdom, but the wisdom that comes from the Lord. Look at verses 22 and 23 of of chapter 8. Remember we talked about this wisdom and that is foundational. Here, these are interesting words right here. Verse 22. The Lord brought me wisdom forth as the first of his works. Before his deeds of old. Verse 23. I was appointed from eternity. From the beginning. Before the world began. So this is no, oh, here comes wisdom real fast. This isn't a good idea that you had that one day. This is baked in with God from the very beginning of all time. That that wisdom has been with God, baked into the very creation of the world. And if we would but hear it, have eyes to see it, ears to hear it, hearts to receive it, that we will find favor, that we will find joy. Verses 30 and 31. Then I was the craftsman at his side. This is still wisdom saying, at the side of the Lord. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in God's presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in humankind. It's it's an interesting thing to me that that God, thanks be to God, that, that God has made God's wisdom known, knowable. It's not unreachable. It's According to scripture, it's something that we we can follow, that we get to follow, that that no one, regardless of how wealthy you are or how much uh, education you have, that that there's a wisdom that's baked into just the fabric of being human, living in this world, that if you really want to know and quiet yourself, quiet your soul, there's a God that will speak to you. There's a wisdom with a capital W that is ready to share with you. If you turn back a chapter, actually back a book, we're going to go to Psalms. Can you go to Psalms 119? Psalm 119, which I believe is the longest psalm. It's got, it's got many, many verses. In fact, we're going to turn to verse 97 of Psalm 119. And that this is just about the Lord. It, yes, it's God's wisdom. Yes, it's God's precepts. It's God's laws for us. But how, how does it manifest? How, how do we do it? What do we do with that? L- listen to this. And this is true for us, church. If we meditate on the law of the Lord, and that word meditate really is just tuning our heart to it. Prayer time in the morning with some coffee. Bible study with friends. Listening at the end of the day, you know, not not just to your own calendar, but to God's calendar, as it were. God's priority order and time over yours. Sometimes we have to really get quiet to hear these things. To meditate on these things. 
119, verse 97. Listen to this. Oh, how I love your law. And I meditate on it day and night. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more insight than my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. Remember, it doesn't matter about your fancy education, doesn't matter about the fancy clothes, about how much money or which college you went to or didn't go to or this or that. There's a, there's a deeper wisdom here. Verse 100, I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I've not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Now listen to this. 105. Your word is a lamp or a light to my feet and a light for my path. But thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Remember that song? Thy word, it's like a lamp for the feet. What does that mean? It's kind of a silly image, isn't it? You really think about a guy walking around with a lamp on his feet, right? It means that you're, you can see where you're going. But it's not headlights that probably go really far. It's just enough to see one foot. And then the next just enough to see the one, the next good step where you are. Not knowing what's up ahead, not knowing in our confusion, in the darkness of confusion that is in our future, God gives us one step of light. God's word is that. Amen? It's, it's, yes, it's brighter than all the darkness, but in our human wisdom with the lowercase w, we don't have all the lights. Our faith allows us to have one, one light on each foot, say, through the word of God, to at least allow us to, to walk into the darkness, into any darkness, any confusion, anything that's going on in our world, and say, just show me what the next best move for me is, God. I don't need to know all the moves. I don't need to know all the steps into the future. I need to know for today. I need to know for today. What's my next right step today, God? You ever feel like that? See, God, God doesn't promise us all knowledge and wisdom the way that God has. But God gives us the glimpse of glory through his word. So spend time and wrestle in God's word. Spend time and read it and reflect on it and know that when you're reading God's word, you're really reading about the wisdom of the Lord that God wants to give to you in your life to give you the next best step. How to love today. How to treat one another today. The greatest example of God's wisdom comes to us in Jesus Christ. Wisdom with a capital W. God made flesh in Jesus Christ. I hope you've got your communion elements ready. We're going to spend a, a moment in, in communion. God gives us God's self. And, and communion is exactly that time. Now, the United Methodist Church, we believe that this is not just a United Methodist table of the Lord. We believe that this is 
God's table. This is not the table of Coke's Chapel or even the table of the Christian church. This table belongs to the Lord. And it belongs to you and those that are willing to repent of their sin, that, that honestly want to seek to live in peace with one another, are invited to live in peace with Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He took the bread, he broke it, and gave thanks to you, Almighty God, and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant poured out for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so let us open up our first layer and our second layer will be for the juice. And we partake together because just as God is one and we are one church, we eat of the one love together, the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. And in the same way, even though we are drinking from individual little plastic cups, it comes from the one cup of the living God, the living Christ poured out for you. Thanks be to God. And now with the confidence, children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Amen, amen. We're going to sing together. So let's stand together and sing. Some of these words, these words, just hear this. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou and thou only, first in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. May that be true for you, not just today, but this whole week. As you give God your glory and give praise where praise is really due. As you follow the wisdom of the Lord, it's crying out to you. The wisdom of the Lord wants to speak. Are you willing to listen? In the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>